Admit what you've done. Don't get upset. Then tell me. I'm getting frightened. We're here! Help us! We're in here! Please, what is this? How many are there? No, 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 no. Don't go in there. Don't go in there. Don't worry. I'll talk to him. He listens to me. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And today, we'll be taking a look at the outstanding 2016 horror thriller, Split, which was directed by M. Night Shyamalan, starring James McAvoy, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Betty Buckley. The film is essentially an exploration of the Horde and their actions, which were a collection of 23 personalities that were residing in the mind of Kevin Wendell Crumb, who was a man in his late 30s that was suffering from an extreme case of dissociative identity disorder. In the face of their scare tactics, we should choke. I hate my insulin shots. I'm wearing cargo pants from the 90s. And the scarf. If it wasn't for the Varvados t-shirt underneath, I'd be a mess. Each of the personalities would lay in the back of his mind until they were given the light, a term used to describe the time they had control over Kevin's body. Though Kevin himself meant no harm, some of his personalities were more sinister, like Dennis and Patricia. Dennis was an obsessive, cold, and tough man who served as the main antagonist for most of the film, with Patricia functioning as a secondary antagonist, who, like Dennis, desired to have as much time in the light as possible. Unfortunately for the world, Kevin also had a 24th personality, which was the true primary antagonist known as the Beast, who was an amalgamation of multiple animals and the result of all the time Kevin spent working at the zoo. When Kevin was a child, his father had abandoned him on a train, leaving him to live with his abusive, obsessive-compulsive mother. His father had coincidentally also died on the East Rail Train 177 disaster in the film Unbreakable, which saw David Dunn, played by Bruce Willis, emerge as a sole survivor. As Kevin's mother continued to abuse him, he began developing multiple personalities as a defense mechanism, ultimately resulting in 23 individualized personalities, each of which spontaneously took control over his body and subjugated him. With no friends and family, Kevin spent most of his days at the zoo, which led to his first job there. Unfortunately for the young man, the torment did not stop, as two girls had once approached him and played a prank, taking his hand and putting it under their shirts before running away in laughter. This left Kevin confused and somewhat vengeful, which I believe contributed to the appetites of Dennis, who had abducted three young girls at the beginning of the film and confined them to a room. Split begins at a birthday party, and it's here that we first notice a young girl named Casey, who was an introvert that did not have many friends. Claire, who was the birthday girl, also points out that she'd invited Casey out of pity, before explaining to her father that Casey was also always in trouble with teachers at school. Feeling bad for the young girl who was waiting for a bus, Claire's father then offers her a lift home, but when the girls enter the car, he is approached by Dennis, who takes him out and enters the driver's seat before knocking the girls out with a chemical spray. After taking them to his mysterious home and locking them up in the confines of a small room, the man then perplexes the girls and the audience with demonstrations of his several personalities, one of which was a child named Hedwig, the youngest member of the Horde who Casey attempts to befriend. Throughout the film, and mainly through the discussions between Kevin and his psychiatrist Dr. Fletcher, it's established that his dominant personality used to be Barry, who was a calm, charismatic man with a talent for fashion and design. Barry was the personality that would meet with Dr. Fletcher, and it was him who described and explained each of the other 22 personalities that he had to contend with. He would also do his best to subjugate the other personalities and keep them from staying in the light, but both Patricia and Dennis had begun to fight with Barry for dominance over Kevin. Patricia was a sophisticated, orderly, and dangerous woman who had considerable command over some of the other personalities, and people in general, by talking in a soft, polite, and threatening manner. Dennis, on the other hand, was the more disturbing of the two, with a cold, temperamental perversion. He would also demonstrate obsessive compulsive traits and a firm, sometimes violent tendency towards cleanliness and order, which was a characteristic duplicated from Kevin's mother. And Hedwig was the adorable nine-year-old personality that loved ending his sentences with etc. 
As a representation of Kevin's innocence, Hedwig was gullible and easily manipulated. And though he was not respected by many of the other personalities who saw him as stupid, he was the only personality that had full mastery of the light, with the ability to place anyone in it or to remove anyone from it. It was because of this that both Patricia and Dennis had manipulated him into denying Barry the ability to be in the light and maintain order as he had done for so long. Every one of us has to wait in a chair and Barry, he decides who stands in the light, but Barry lost that power because of me. I can wish myself in the light anytime I want. It's a, it's a special power. As the film progresses, Claire attempts to escape the room through the dry wall and manages to make it through the vents into an underground passage before hiding in a nearby locker. Unfortunately for her, Dennis finds her and locks her in a separate room. Have I done something? You've emailed for an unscheduled appointment two days in a row. <laughs> I'm just feeling overwhelmed. I'm gonna ask again, to whom am I speaking with now? Uh, Dr. Fletcher. Yeah, it's Barry. I'm gonna take a professional guess based on the description of all 23 identities that live in Kevin's body that I've gotten from Barry. I think I'm talking to Dennis. After Dr. Fletcher's appointment, she soon realizes that Dennis and Patricia, who were banned from taking the light by Barry, had now taken full control. Hedwig eventually opens up to Casey, who was the only one of the girls that wasn't in trouble, and excitedly warns her that the Beast, who was the malevolent 24th personality with incredible abilities, was coming for them. And unfortunately for the girls, the Beast was by far the most terrifying, hostile, and dangerous of all the personalities. Idolized by both Patricia and Dennis, the Beast was an extremely violent and savage personality with an unquenchable lust for human flesh and an unwavering belief that the rest of the people in the world were impure because they had not suffered like him. What's most incredible about this personality was that he possessed superhuman strength, speed, agility, and an incredible resistance to damage as is seen later in the film. Hedwig then tells Casey that he has a window in his room, which he perceives to be a potential escape route. However, once we get to the room, we realize it was a hand-drawn picture of a window. Now, unlike the other two girls who had lived in a presumably good, privileged life, Casey herself had been a victim of abuse, just like Kevin, and she had been tormented by her uncle, who had taken custody of her since the death of her father, and we see heartbreaking glimpses of this throughout the film. With the arrival of the Beast close at hand, Barry is able to take control of the light for enough time to send multiple emails to Dr. Fletcher, begging for help. When the good doctor arrives at their home, she tells Dennis that Kevin was lucky to have him as a protector, but also explains she was genuinely concerned for them. Dennis lets her in and reveals the cruel nature of Kevin's mother, who would hurt him when he was only three, which was the precise moment that Dennis was created to protect Kevin by mirroring his mother's obsessive compulsive behavior to keep the house spotless and avoid her wrath. Truly believing that Dr. Fletcher thought they were special, Dennis opens up and explains that the other people she'd been studying with their condition that were capable of extraordinary things were able to do so because of the belief each of the personalities had shared. Dennis then reveals more about the Beast, and explains that he'd actually met the 24th personality, whose description unsettles Dr. Fletcher, leading her to leave, insisting that they should continue their discussion tomorrow. I lied before, when you asked if I'd ever met the Beast. I said no, that really isn't true. What are you trying to say? There are things, Dr. Fletcher, that all of us would find hard to believe. The Beast is real. He's just emerged. Dr. Fletcher then discovers one of the girls and begs Dennis to stop what they're doing, attempting to explain that the formation of the Beast was a result of where they were living, but she is subdued by Dennis. We then see Dennis at the train station, where he buys flowers to commemorate the death of Kevin's father on the East Rail before entering the train yard. We then see the transformation of the beast on a train, who then sprints towards their home to feast on the impure young which had been left as an offering to him. The beast then appears in front of Dr. Fletcher, and thanks her for helping the Horde until his arrival. Visibly much more muscular than the other personalities, and with dark veins flowing through his body, the beast then grabs the doctor from behind and slowly squeezes the life out of her. 
and though she tries to repel him with a knife, it merely crumbles with each attempt, indicating that his skin had miraculously hardened. The beast then feeds on two of the girls before Casey finds a note with Kevin's full name and instructions to say it out loud, just as the creature is seen crawling the walls behind her. Casey says his name, temporarily bringing back Kevin Crumb who had lost control of his body for three years. After discovering what his personalities had done, Kevin begs her to take his shotgun and shoot him, leading to each of the personalities to fight back, with the Horde insisting that they had full control over what was happening prior to giving the light back to the Beast, who begins to hunt Casey down. Though the Beast takes a chunk out of her leg, Casey is able to overcome her fear and pain of being a victim and challenges the Beast, pumping two rounds into him which only temporarily slows him down. The beast then begins to bend the bars between them, but stops as soon as he notices the scars on her body. Realizing that she wasn't like the others, he tells her to rejoice as the broken were the more evolved, prior to leaving her in peace. By the end of the movie, not only does Kevin go through a major transformation with the official addition of the beast into his horde, but so does Casey, transforming into a strong, determined woman of action. And at the film's conclusion, when an officer informs her that her uncle had arrived to claim her and asks her if she was ready to go, Casey does not, indicating that she finally had the strength to take control of her life and was likely about to report her uncle for what he had done. We then get a look at a local diner where David Dunn, the protagonist of the phenomenal Unbreakable, can be seen watching a news report where details about the Horde and their abilities are being discussed, reinforcing the notion that both Unbreakable and Split occur in the same universe. M. Night Shyamalan's best film in over a decade, he truly returns to fine form and his roots with a small terrific cast, an outstanding premise and the masterful craftsmanship that put him on the map with films like The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable. James McAvoy is a tour de force, with the ease in which he transitions into each of the 25 idiosyncratic personalities, including Kevin. From the playful innocence of Hedwig, menacing tendencies of Patricia and Dennis, to the terrifying portrayal of the Beast. It's because of this that I truly believe Split is one of the most intriguingly complex origin stories for a villain that I have ever seen, and it perfectly mirrors its unbreakable counterpart, whilst also serving as an elegant sequel in the East Rail 177 trilogy. If you haven't seen Split, make sure that you watch Unbreakable first so you can understand how it all fits together, and if you don't have a copy, I've left a link to where you can purchase both of these below. Well, that's all for today folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested an explanation of Split. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. One identity in an individual with dissociative identity disorder can have high cholesterol. One. There have been cases where one identity is allergic to bee stings. The others are not. The identities have different IQs. They have different physical strengths. One personality is a Russian weightlifter and can lift three times his body weight. Have these individuals, through their suffering, unlocked the potential of the brain?